Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So this morning I'm in Tuscany, Italy. We're going to be painting this incredible sunrise. Um, so it's pretty early in the morning and I'm still going to be sipping a little bit. <laughs> but what I've decided to do is do a little bit of Prosecco, which is a champagne and some orange juice. So I have myself my morning Italian mimosa. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for the materials that we're gonna be using today, we're gonna to be using a 16 by 20 stretched and prime canvas that you can get at any of your local craft stores or online. You can certainly change up the size, but this is the size I'm gonna be using today. I'm also going to have a cup of water for washing my brushes. I have, whoop, <laughs> I have a paper towel for drying my brushes. Three brushes I'm going to be using today is a one inch wide bristle brush, I have a number six round synthetic brush, and I have a number one round synthetic brush. I also am using acrylic paints. The, the colors that I'm using today is titanium white, cobalt blue, green oxide, raw umber. I'm using a beautiful pink here, fire red, chrome yellow, and Mars black. Uh, you can certainly change up these colors if you'd like, but that's all we're going to be using today. Alright, so the first step that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be drawing a quick sketch um, of my hills so I can separate them so when I go to paint them it'll be a little bit easier. A good rule of thumb is to have um, your, your canvas cut in thirds for a good balance. So I'm going to do about a third of the sky and two thirds of the land. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to be actually, I want those cypress trees to be in my painting, but they're a little bit far out of my, out of my viewpoint. So I'm going to be moving them over to the left, who's to know, right? Um, I'm using my creative license here, but I want to get myself a ridge line of those far hills back there. So I'm going to start over on the right hand side. I'm going to come about a third of the way down my canvas. And I'm going to draw that back ridge line, knowing that I'm going to keep a little bit of a hill over on this side. So I'm just going to kind of mark my territory here. And okay, so I, I have a little bit of a bump back here. And then it just kind of rolls over that kind of a straight shot in through there. And this is just to get me um, in the right vicinity as I'm painting the sky because I want that sky to be the star of the show here um, and I'm just going to kind of trail this off because I'm going to put a couple little hills in through here and again doesn't have to be exactly as you see I'm improv I'm, I'm improving a little bit here uh, this one on the far left is going to come down into my valley that I'm doing here I'm making it a little bit sharper than I'm visually seeing it. I've got a road that's going to happen. So that's going to be somewhere down here. It's going to tuck behind this little hill. And now I'm going to go for this back one that's sitting in front of here. And again, you can kind of improv a little bit. This is just to get the general gist of what this um, hill is doing. I know that there's a little bit of a cypress tree mound far in the distance that I want to capture, so I'm going to go up just a little bit higher here. And then, this is what pencils are for. I've got this one coming. i got one more I want to kind of capture here, one or two more. My road also kind of trail. There's another, the back side of this road comes in through here, so I just want to make sure I know where that is. And then that's kind of it. Maybe I've got a little bit of a 
land split and through here. This is gonna be this hill, and I've got separating. I'm, what I'm really doing is getting these this so I have different color sections. Um, and again, you can improv a little bit, but this is gonna be my basic sketch for, uh, for these beautiful hills and the sunrise that we're gonna be doing in a second here. So for the next step, you're going to be putting your pencil down, grab this uh, number one inch bristle brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so the first step that I'm gonna be doing is the sky. I'm using my, um, the first painting step, I'm using my one inch wide bristle brush. I'm starting with blue and white to get the top of that sky, but I'm definitely gonna be using a lot of my other colors to include brown, red, pink, and maybe a little bit of yellow, um, but I'm gonna kind of see how this goes because the sky is gonna be changing as I'm doing it, so I wanna just start this off with some blue and white up at the top because I know that a beautiful sunrise and sunset you can usually detect some of that normal sky blue in there so I'm going to just start it off with that get my paint going here and I'm going to adjust my paint as I go I'm moving left to right so this way um, I I'll be able to do a nice gradient I'm going to get this a little bit lighter as it comes down and starts getting those sunrise colors in it. And I'm detecting, I'm going to touch my brush in a little bit of red, pink, and white to, to start some colors here. I will probably end up going back up into my um, my sky colors that I haven't even really touched yet or I've got a vacant space between them but I just want to start getting these colors on here and I can certainly build some layers but I don't want to miss what I'm seeing out there so I'm just adding my colors on as I go here watching that sky getting detecting some of those hues of colors that I'm seeing and making sure that I translate them well onto, onto the canvas here. And again, it doesn't have to be exactly as you see it out there, but if you can capture some of these beautiful hues, then you, you've, done, you've done your job. And plus, or especially since it's changing as I'm going, as I'm coming down towards that bottom of the, the skyline, I can see that there's almost like these purpley colors. So I'm gonna use a touch of blue and a touch of red to get some, some purpley colors going on down here. Because I think we all know that blue and red makes purple. So I'm just gonna start to incorporate this down at the bottom. And if you use nice thin layers with your paint, with acrylic paint, you'll be able to, um, it'll dry fast, so you'll be able to build layers upon layers. Um, right now I'm just adding a little bit of pink onto here to dull down that blue a little bit. And I do want, I'm seeing that it's lighter below this dark part, so. I want to get this dark part on here and then I'm going to lighten it up a little bit with some white. But let me just get this on here first. It's tough because the sun is coming up so fast on me right now. But I definitely, this, this uh, sky is definitely going to be the star of the show. So I got to give it a minute here to develop on my canvas as well. And then once I feel like I've got some pretty nice colors here, I'm just uh, washing my brush for a second here so I can lighten up some of um, this upper sky in through here. So you can see, the, see it more dramatic next to the, the sunrise colors. I think I want a little more intensity on these orange, on this like orange color. So 
bear with me for a second here as I'm kind of just tweaking my colors here. I just want to make sure I really capture some of these beautiful hues that are happening. And then what I'm going to do uh, next is I will be using this same brush, but I'm going to want to wash it um, and dry it. So let me just do one little last thing here, and then we're going to wash and dry this big brush for the next step. What I'm doing right now is I'm lightening up right by this horizon because I see that it's the lightest or lighter as it is coming up over the over the horizon there so I just want to add a little bit of lightness here so when we do put the hills on we'll we'll see that difference and then that's I'm pretty happy with that so I'm gonna be washing and drying my brush and getting ready for the next step all right so for the next step what we're gonna be doing we're using our one inch wide bristle brush we're gonna be doing the back hills so for me, the back hills are going to be anything behind this road here. So it's going to be whatever I've designated as, as my outlines back there. And as the hills get farther away, they lose some colors. So the ones that are farthest away are going to have more blue in them and less of the yellows and the reds. So I'm going to be using blue, brown, and white for that farthest back mountain. And my goal here is to get them darker at the top and lighter at the bottom to show that there's some kind of fog that's lifting up. So I'm going to use a little bit of blue, a little bit of brown, and just a touch of white to start this hill. And I'm just going to be using a, like a little dotting technique here um, to start to get this paint on. It doesn't have to stay like a dotting technique, especially in these smaller areas. This really just kind of gives you um, a good texture to it. Um, so still just blue, brown, and white. And you can see I'm just doing the tops of these hills right now. So that way when, I, um, when I've got my outline in essence, I can then just add white to my brush without washing my brush. And this is gonna allow me to do that lighter part down at the bottom. So now I've got I just added white to my brush and I'm bringing the color up into the darker shade at the top of this particular um, hill formation. And this is going to show you that low lying um, fog or mist or whatever is getting ready to rise with that sunset or sunrise. Um, and if you feel like you need to adjust your colors at all, feel free to do so. Um, if you need to do multiple layers on it, feel free to do so, but I think I'm going to get this in one shot here. Again, I'm just adding white to my brush right now to lighten up the bottom. And I'm not using very much paint on my brush at all, so this way I can really control it. And so that's what I'm going to do for the back hill here, or for the one, one of the back hills. I do have these other ones right here. So I'm going to kind of emulate the same thing, but I can see in the distance that I'm beginning to see more colors. So I'm also going to incorporate brown and green into here. So I'm still using my, or actually I used brown, blue, and white here. I'm going to use brown, blue, white, plus green. So I've got my brown, blue that I've already started to make. I'm going to touch it in a little bit of green and just a, a touch of white. And this is going to get me a little bit darker of a hill. I think I want a little bit more brown in here. And this is, again, going to give me my darker area up at the top. Um, I can start to detect little trees and stuff as this hill is, is forming because it's getting closer to me so I can see a little bit more detail in it. So if you can incorporate a little bit of that detail in this one great but I definitely still want to have blue in it to keep it um, staying back and I've just missed this little hill here but I'll come I'll circle back and get that in a second and again I'm just kind of adding my little tops here and if I see 
I see a, a little bit of cypress poking up over here, so I'm gonna just kind of improvise here and add a little bit of height in through there. I wanna get a little bit of section there. And now that I've got that outline, I'm just gonna add some white to my brush. And this is gonna give you that lighter effect as it's coming down. I'm feeling like this hill is a little bit light, so I'm gonna add a little bit more brown at the top. And then this white, again, is gonna add that mist coming down at the bottom. And again, if you don't get the perfect color on, on the first shot, no worries. This isn't a, an exact perfect color, but I really like it, so that's, that's why we have our creative license so we can kind of modify things as we go and enjoy the color palette that that's being created for us and here we go I'm just gonna finish up this little hill here and then I will be using this big brush for the next step let me just get this tiny little guy in through here so I'll be using this br the bigger brush for the next step but I do want to wash it and dry it so when you've got this pretty well identified with darker tops and light bottom, you can take, uh, it's hard to stop. You can take this brush, wash it and dry it and get prepared for the next step. All right, so for the next step, we're gonna be doing the front uh, hills that we see. So it's in essence gonna be the rest of the canvas except for the road. Well, I can do, I'll do the road too because it's just a little, little bit of color in through there so it will include the road um, and it's going to be a combination of all the colors on my palette except for probably pink and blue because I'm seeing greens I'm seeing yellows I'm seeing reds I'm seeing browns I'm seeing black or like a grayish color so I'm going to be starting on this hill over here and I want to just get my basic colors so it's a really muted green I'm not worried about um, my the, the trees. I do want this little section here. I, I know that this is trees and they're dark, so I'm gonna start there, just kind of work my way through the canvas. So this set here, I'm gonna be using brown, black, and green, and I'm just really gonna start to dot this in. Um, I'll probably end up using a little bit of, you know, lighter shades just to intermingle with these darker shades and this is really a, a little tree line that is on the back side of my road um, which I can certainly um, re-identify later if I need to but I think I might be able to get it here which is using this dotting technique and some light and well not light but the green brown and black on my brush and this really gives me a good combination of those colors and I'm just going to to spin myself right into here, which is gonna be those colors plus white. And you could use a dotting technique or you could kind of use your brush left to right. Um, I do see that there's uh, some little marks from the trees up at the top, so I'm gonna kind of incorporate little bits of those. And then as I'm coming down here, I'm gonna be using some more green, yellow, white, brown, you know, whatever natural tones you're seeing in there as the base color. And right now I'm just gonna kind of block this in and get myself a kind of a soft green color, earthy kind of tone to this. You see it's a little bit lighter in some areas, but I will probably come back later and do just some touch-ups as I'm putting putting the trees in place so just again getting a nice base on here that we're going to be using as the backdrop for all of our little details so it doesn't have to be perfect it doesn't have to be um, fully executed where you don't see the brush strokes because again we're going to be adding something on top of it I do see that the, it's along the side of my road so I'm gonna make sure that I get that all the way around the side of my road and this little section here I'm seeing is a different color um, so I'm gonna incorporate that in a second but I'm gonna just knock out my road right now by using black and white 
and just kind of getting it set in here with my small brush. I mean, excuse me, with a small brush stroke with my big brush, just using the corner of my brush. I've got just a little piece of road in through here. And that's really all I'm gonna do for the road. It's not gonna be anything more complicated than that. And now I'm gonna start doing the other hills that I see. Um, I think I might actually work here and then work my way back down here because that one, that far one to me is kind of like a grayish brown. So I'm gonna use black, brown, um, and green. And we're gonna get this pretty dark back here. And I am gonna incorporate a little bit of lightness coming down because I'm, I'm seeing this might, I might wanna bring that up a little bit, but we'll get this here. So, and I'm, I'm touching my brush in, in red because I want a little bit of red back here, a little bit more warmth back here. I definitely want it to still kind of feel like it's off in the distance, but I wanted a little bit of warmth in there. And then I'm adding a little bit of white to my brush as it's coming down. I'm going to bump. I don't like where this sits. I'm going to put it up higher based on what I'm seeing out there. So you can improv, like you can change that sketch as, as you go along. Don't worry if it's, um, if you discover afterwards that you want your, your painting to be a little bit different because right now I want this to be a little bit different. So this hill here, I'm seeing lots of reds and yellows and stuff in it. I don't wash my brush very often, as you'll probably notice. Um, so I just went into red, yellow, green, and um, some brown here. And I want this to be a really rich color. I'm seeing that it's, it's a beautiful color to me. It's almost like a sienna type color, but it's got a lot, you know, a little hints of green and yellow in it, um, hints of red and brown. So this is um, really a, a type of hill that I like to change the colors on my brush as I go. Um, so that way I am going to have kind of natural um, high and low spots that I'll be able to highlight or add shadows to in that last layer. But right now I'm still just kind of picking up these, the, these five colors, red, green, brown, yellow, and white. And it's making a nice little color combination. This is where it, it meets that road right there. And then we'll be able to, again, add some little highlights and stuff on that final layer. Um, there is this front, there's a front little hill here that I'm going to incorporate in a second. Um, but I still am working on this, this colorful back one. And just still picking up that same color combination. Oh, a little bit more red in here, maybe a little bit more yellow. And then I have another section in through here that is pretty similar to this only a little bit lighter so I'm going to use that same color combination with maybe a little bit more white goes right up to my road and then I have that one last section which I didn't um, sketch out but I do want to incorporate because it, it's going to add another good element to my canvas it's this textured sand um, right in front of me. So I just added black, brown, white, maybe a little yellow and red. And this is, I'm just going to dot this a little bit, maybe a little more red. A little bit more white. And this just, it's bringing all these pieces forward in the canvas. It's giving uh, every single um, thing that I've done it's giving it its own place on the canvas. So I can keep dotting this just to give it, I wanna make sure you can see this section in front. And then once we get done with this step, we are gonna be using uh, the same brush, or let's see, what brush are we gonna be using? No, we're gonna, we're gonna switch brushes to your tiny brush after this step. So once you're all done getting this, last piece 
of, um, of the puzzle into place here. You'll put the big brush in your water cup and you're gonna get that small, the smallest brush out and ready for the next step. I'm just kind of finishing up here, making sure I have it all nice and covered. This is definitely one of the bigger steps, um, but, and you could take hours doing it just to make sure you get every little, you know, hill the way that you want it. Um, but my sun is rising quickly here, so I'm trying to kind of capture these colors and just make sure I block in each section. And when we go to do um, the, the future steps, we'll be able to kind of modify these and give them any little extra punch that they might need. Um, but at this point, I'm pretty, pretty happy with this. Let me just kind of make sure I've got it all filled in. And again, I just kind of dotted this because I'm seeing such texture in front of me. Um, and then that's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna conclude this step. And again, you can, you can get out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so for the next step, we're gonna be using the number one round brush. We're gonna be painting the little details off on the ridge line. So I'm gonna be using similar colors to what I had on there. So which were brown, blue, um, green, white, and a little bit of black if you need to. So I'm gonna just start with a little bit of brown over here. I'm gonna be doing the, the section all the way to the left that I see. Um, and right now I'm just using some brown. I'm just really doing some tall skinny marks in through here. I want it to look like it blends right into that um, ridge line, which is what it looks like to me. And then I can, I want there to be some points on it. So if you're looking at it from a distance, it resembles the, um, the cypress trees. And again, you can get really creative with this and extend it as much as you want. I'm actually putting them closer than they are in reality because I want to. That's, that's what we do as artists. Um, and again, this is just meant to be like an impression of them. I'm gonna come over here. There's a little block one right in through here. So I'd like to get that on my canvas and I'm moving it. Again, it's much closer to these than it is in actual reality, but I like it, so I'm incorporating it. I would need a really long canvas to get all of these things onto one um, silhouette, so that's why I've chosen to just kind of mush them together. I want these two to look different than one another. And now I'm just going through and saying, oh, there's something here that I wanna incorporate. So I'm gonna go and put a little bump there. Um, there's these little trees up and through here that I wanna make sure I just have a little bit of a silhouette for them. That's going to really bring a, a natural sense to this. Um, and if you see anything else, or if you feel like you've got uh, a vacant space on this horizon line that you wanna fill in, feel free to do so. Um, and that's about all I'm gonna do on that step. I'm really not doing too, too much with it, just making sure I had these in here and a couple of little details on that. And then I'm going to be uh, using my medium brush for the next step. So after you're all set with your little details up at the top, you can put your small brush away and get your medium brush out and get ready for the next step. Okay, so for the next step, I'm using my medium brush, which is the number six uh, round brush. And I'm in essence moving forward in the painting. So I'm gonna be doing these similar details that I have up on this ridge line, but I'm gonna be doing it in the next cluster of hills and stuff. So I've used, I'm using a bigger brush, so it will have bigger objects. I do want to finish this back tree line. I'm gonna do my road and I'm gonna do any identifying little details that I see on these hilltops. The rest of the hills are gonna be done with my big brush, so I'm only gonna use this for as long as I need to, and then I'll switch to the big one. So for I'm gonna be using a multitude of colors. I'm gonna be using black, white, green, brown, um, and maybe a little red, but I'm gonna start back here. I'm just gonna make sure I have those trees 
in place. I've got, I'm using black and green just to make sure I've, I've got a nice, they were kind of too straight for me, so I'm just kind of adding a little bit of detail up at the tops so it's not too, too straight. Um, I've got a couple of maybe little trees poking out over here. And then as I go over here, it's not a whole lot of detail. I do want to make sure I've finished my road down here. So I'm connecting and making sure I have like a little shadow at underneath here and that I don't have any vacant canvas left. I'm going to put a little bit of white on my brush to get this road to be a little bit more visible in through here. And it doesn't have to be a solid color. You can just kind of do some form of gray. I want to make sure I've got some of this road and the edge of it incorporated over here. Okay, so, so it's detected as a road. Now on the, um, the closer side of the road right here, I do see that there's similar trees to this on this side. And I know I wanna use my small or my medium brush to do this. So I just picked up some green, brown, and black. And I wanna make sure that I have some kind of tree line on this side of the, of the road. So that way when I go to do the hills, the final layer on the hills, I've got this separation of this line of trees right here. So I'm just really kind of using a dotting technique. Um, I do want them to get a little bit bigger as they're coming around this corner. So I am just making a little bit bigger dots here. And you can see how it's closing off the gap on the, um, on the road. So it really is making it, giving it good dimension. I want to Kind of get some of this color in through here and i'm using this brush because it fits for me it fits the 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 size of what i'm doing right now um and it's allowing me to get the the little details on here that i want i do see a couple of little um sections of grass too so i'm gonna leave some of that green showing and maybe i'll touch my brush in green, yellow, brown, and white, and just kind of make sure these little grassy sections are identified. And then I'm just gonna do a little bit more detail up on the top of here with this small brush. It's gonna be this hill here, um, green, brown, black, red. And these are gonna be these, those little trees and stuff that I see at the top of this hill. And then once we get done with this section, um, I am gonna be switching brushes to my big brush to get the majority of um, the rest of the hills all nice and set. Uh, this is kind of going into here and I'm having difficulty seeing it. So I'm just gonna incorporate a couple of different colors here. Whenever you have difficulty seeing the object that you're painting against the, the object behind it, you really just need to make sure the contrast is there for the colors. So like if I was losing that and through there, I needed to lighten one or darken the other. Um, and then once you get this all set, again, I'm gonna be switching brushes to my, um, to my big brush, but I wanna make sure I've got some good detail, as much detail as I can kind of incorporate in a quick fashion down here. And then we're gonna go with your big brush for the next step. Okay, so the next step I'm gonna be using my large brush, my one inch wide bristle brush. Um, I'm gonna be using probably all of the colors on my palette except for pink and blue. And I'm gonna be finishing these hills. Um, and I'm gonna be doing it in kind of a color blocking sense because this is Again, not a photorealistic painting. It's a nice impressionistic uh, image here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of work my way probably this hill, then this hill, and then um, my little details. So again, I'm seeing that the, these are some soft greens and then there's separation with tree lines. So I just am going to be using green, brown, yellow, and white to make sure that I've got a nice softness 
throughout this um, throughout this greenery. And then what I'll do is I will come back and just pop in the, the little tree lines. But I want to make sure I've got the whole ground covered. I've got these little pieces in through here. I want to make sure I've got. And now I'm going to be using brown, black, green to do these tree lines. So I know that I have this here. I've got this one coming in through here. I want to make sure that you can see them. So if I have to go a little bit darker than I want to, just to make sure you see them, I'm going to do that. Um, it's getting a little bit tough because the sun is coming up quite rapidly. It has crested over the hill, so it definitely looks much different, I'm sure, to you than it did uh, when we started this adventure about 20 minutes ago or so. Uh, so that's why I'm kind of speeding along here so I don't miss the colors that are happening. Um, I've got this line in through here and then I've got some going on right in through here. So you can dot it. I've got a big tree line in through here. I'm gonna use some green, yellow, and white to give me maybe a little bit of highlight on the top of this without going too bold. Because I wanna make sure again that you can see it against that background. And then because I'm going from the back and moving forward, I'll be able to put this grass uh, right on top of it. But what I'm gonna do before I go and do that, because I have the dark colors on my brush, I'm gonna work my way over here um, I have darker colors and I'm just going to kind of add some some shadows and highlights in through this hill on the back side and then on the front side over there I can see that it is really starting to brighten up with the sun coming up. Um, I just put some red on my brush too so I can get some nice nice color variation in through here and what I'm doing is I'm putting these shadows on as, as if they're the back side Oops, that was pink. <laughs> That's all right. Um, as if they're the back side of some of these little peaks that we're seeing. And then I'm just going to go put white on my brush and get some highlights in through here. Maybe a little bit of yellow, red, and white. And then if I feel like uh, my colors are getting muddled or anything on my brush, I can certainly uh, wash my brush. But right now I'm just going to kind of roll with it because I'm, I'm digging what's happening here. And as you can see, I'm just kind of adding yellow, red, white, maybe a little more yellow. I'm looking at my, my landscape over there. I'm making sure that I've got some, some really bright colors. I might actually wash my brush in a second here so I can get some brighter colors, but I'm just rolling with it for the moment. And I'm just kind of getting these to blend in a little bit. This is going to be the bright side that goes down over towards that road. This is these little peaky hills that are taking on that beautiful sunshine right now. And I'm going to wash and dry my brush so because I want this to be light and I do want to incorporate a little bit more over here but I want to give it a second to to dry and kind of relax itself but so I'm gonna wash and dry my brush really quickly so I can get these lighter colors without um, the black interfering the black that I had on my brush so this looks like really bright grass to me right now so I'm going to be using yellow, green, and white on top of this like muted brown that I had here. And this is going to give me a beautiful color to this grass in through here. And if you felt like you needed it to be a little bit warmer in tone, you could just pick up some warmer color that you probably already have on your, on your palette. But I'm watching over there and I'm seeing it's pretty similar to that. Um, and now I really want some brightness right in through here. So I'm going to go red, 
yellow, and some white. And get myself a nice kind of peachy orange. Almost there, hold on. When you're making these colors on the fly, it, uh, it's, a f it's fun to try and get that colored exactly the way that you want it. All right, I've got some pretty orange here. And then over here, flatlining it up here. And then again, it, because there's so much happening and it's so quickly changing on me, the, um, your painting gets to change as you're, uh, as you're creating it. Um, I do want a little bit darker up here just to finish this off at the top. Maybe a little bit of brown. Get this to emulate the, the back side of it. And then the only thing that I think I'm gonna do, um, the only other thing I think I'm gonna do is just kind of re-identify the edge of this one. And then I think I'm gonna call it because I got the majority of the pieces in, in through here. I'm digging what's, what's happening. Um, so I'm gonna just use a little bit of brown because I see that this, this um, dirt or whatever that's right in front of us is darkening as that sun is coming up because it's, it's getting a shadow behind it. So I'm gonna make this just a little bit darker so it has a better dimension that I'm seeing right now. Um, and it also is separating it from the pieces from the other section of hill that is right behind it. So this is turning more into like a silhouette rock dirt thing that we have in front of us. And then this is in essence going to be the final thing that I do. So after I do this, there's always one last uh, important step to every creation that you make. Uh, and that's going to be done with that small little brush. So once you get done kind of giving this as much texture and as much life as you want it to have, I'm going to step back here just to kind of take a look. Um, I got one last thing because I'm seeing some fog, so I'm still, I want to just soften this a little bit. I just took a touch of white. I want to, white, green, yellow. Sorry, I can't miss this beautiful thing that's happening in front of me. It's just, it's so soft, I can't miss it. I, I wanted to work with that back there. I'm just softening this. This is the beauty of being a painter. Sometimes you, you think that you're done and you're just gonna go right back and touch it just a little bit more and get this just the way that you want it so when you go to look at it you're all you're, you're proud of it and that's just kind of okay that's it okay so tiny brush for the last step get ready for it okay so the last step I'm gonna do is the last step I do on every painting which is signing it I'm gonna use my small uh, number one brush I'm gonna be using black paint you can sign it in the bottom left or the bottom right I'm gonna be signing mine in the bottom left I'm gonna be doing my initials. You can really make this into whatever signature you want. You could have your full name, you could do it with the date, you could do it with whatever you'd like. Um, so that's the conclusion of my sunrise painting um, in Tuscany, Italy. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you love your painting and I look forward to seeing you again. Thanks for watching. Please join me as I paint and sip around the world.